So now we know that object-oriented programming is a way or style of doing things. We now need to know what an object is. If you think of real life, the idea that every single thing can be its own object, a person, a house, a car, these in the real world are known as objects. The same applies to a computer program. You can design these objects to hold their own specific information, also known as attributes or properties. A glass cup, stating whether it's full or empty, a car's mileage. These are known as an object's properties. Not only do these objects contain information, but also certain behaviors. A dog object could bark. An email object could send a message. These are actions of an object, also known as methods, that are actually just subroutines or functions. Let's see an example on how we would go about making use of an object. In this example, I'm going to be creating a player object. So, as you can see, we have created a new file called player.as. But wait, what is this, a class? Why isn't it called an object? This is what we're trying to do after all. Every file we create won't actually be an object, but a class, a blueprint example of the object we want to create. I want to build a house. But first, I need plans of the house to understand how it's to be built. The class allows us to create as many objects as we like. We're not limited to the amount of copies or instances we can create. So, let's add some properties to the player class and some methods we can call later on. There you have it. We have a working class. There are a few things to note before we continue. Your class file needs to follow certain guidelines to be treated as a valid class file, known as the syntax. The syntax, by definition, is the set of rules that defines the combinations of symbols that are considered to be a correctly structured document or fragment 